Today, we're talking to Philip Sonder, the head of the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thanks very much for asking me to join here. Okay, Philip, so tell us a little bit about the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center and the work that you're doing in the blockchain ecosystem. Okay, well, uh, the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center belongs to the university, um, which is called Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. We're sitting in Frankfurt, that's in the middle of Germany, and we have uh, basically built this blockchain center approximately three and a half years ago. And since then, we are focusing on the following topics. That's, of course, crypto assets. That's more and more the digital euro on a blockchain basis. And in Germany, that's the digital securities uh, topics, uh, which is quite strongly related to tokenization, which is really speeding up these days in Germany. These are the core content domains. And here we are doing um, multiple projects, which you would call applied research. For example, we are running two projects for the European Commission. Uh, we are having one project uh, for the uh, economic ministry in Berlin. We also have a couple of consulting projects for uh, local banks and for utilities providers, for example, and we do conferences. So that's basically uh, what we are trying to do and uh, as an, let's call it as an academic think tank in the form of doing applied research, yes. That's great. So what do you think is the biggest obstacle to widespread mainstream adoption of blockchain and DLT technologies around the world? Yeah, there are two varying opinions here. First of all, innovations and their adoption just take some time. Sometimes I think you can't really accelerate this. Uh, it's basically a predefined path. That's the curve of innovation or curve of adoption, which is happening here. And you can't make the second step before the first one. So we just need more time until people understand, adopt uh, um, blockchain, crypto, digital securities, and so on. So therefore, um, maybe there is no obstacle and we just need to have more time. But China tells us and other countries as well that you can accelerate and you can do, do it much more faster. And uh, if you believe it this way, that's the second opinion here, then uh, I think two things are missing here. One is called education and the other one is budget. Um, people are trying to do blockchain with close to zero budget. Uh, journalists are asking where are the real life applications but hardly any money is spent there so this doesn't really fit together so expectations are extremely high budget is extremely low and therefore there's some kind of misfit and i think blockchain will accelerate massively when public authorities that could be the european union but also the the local governments but also companies such as industrial corporations financial organizations and so on, when they decide uh, to run projects, to spend money, to employ people, to increase mm -hmm. their educational levels and so on, I think then we will uh, follow an accelerated path of adoption. And I think, so you just answered my other question, which was what specifically you think the community can do to help address and overcome that obstacle? You think part of it is education? Uh, yes, I, I think education is absolutely key. So, you know, John, why are you now here interviewing me? Because apparently you must be in the space also for a couple of years, right? Same with me. We have read like hundreds of papers, watched movies on YouTube and talked to thousands of people. This is all parts of education. We have written pieces and uh, medium articles and so on, white papers. This is all education. That's exactly why, why we could consider being part of this uh, little blockchain community. And uh, if more people would engage in education, you know, like me instructing others, but also others instructing themselves, reading papers and so on, um, then basically at some point of time, they will be all becoming part of the community then yeah. the, the community would grow and then uh, adoption would take place. So therefore education is in my mind, the core. And I yeah. think you would also confirm, you know, like really getting into blockchain, understanding it, it, it's not possible by watching a YouTube video or doing like one day seminar. You need to have weeks or sometimes months of studying, reading, talking, learning uh, mm -hmm. to, to then be able to kind of say you have understood at least a fraction of blockchain technology because it's so broad and so deep. And so where do you see the industry, the, the blockchain industry in the next 10 years? Um, well, I'm, I'm extremely uh, convinced of the following uh, fact that basically there will, there will be no financial uh, market, there will be no capital market, there will be no finance in general without blockchain technology, right? So this includes the digital euro 
at some point of time running on a blockchain basis. It includes securities, uh, tokenized assets on blockchain basis. And of course, it also includes Ethereum and crypto assets. So there will be no finance uh, without blockchain in the future. You already can see this now with regulation taking place. In Germany, we had the crypto law since January. Now we have a proposal for digital securities, which is also um, most probably going in the area of DLT. Uh, now, end of the September, we have the European Commission uh, pros proposing their crypto assets regulation. So you have multiple domains now being regulated for, um, for the realm of blockchain technology. And therefore, I would conclude at this point of time, there will be no finance uh, without blockchain, right? And uh, if this holds true, then you have like dozens of banks, dozens of startups, dozens of large scale industrial corporations and also SMEs who at some point of time uh, join uh, this. And therefore I would conclude at this point of time that we are right before a tremendous growth happening in these various domains uh, of blockchain. So what use cases are you most excited about coming online in the, in the next year or two? I think um, everything related to tokenization is absolutely fascinating and tokenization here in specific of tokenizing real assets. Yeah? In case the fears are becoming true that we might have inflation uh, coming to us, you know, like uh, in the aftermath of Corona uh, with all the debt uh, piling up, um, then real assets can be very interesting because they could hold their value. Uh, so tokenizing real assets can be fascinating. That's diamonds, gold, uh, real estate, uh, classic cars, all kinds of things of this way. I think that, that that's that's basically a very, very interesting small category which should uh, develop nicely. Um, then interesting is uh, everything related to the digital euro, especially in the industrial sector. That's basically connecting industrial goods, vehicles, cars, machines, sensors uh, to a euro payment network such that these machines can basically start transact euro and this would then basically enable new kinds of business models in the area of pay per use yeah basically um pay per use business models for industrial purpose i think this is also fascinating yeah. um, and then of course we have uh, multiple fascinating uh, aspects in the area of crypto assets including DeFi, which basically is an basically a small evolving capital mm -hmm. market with all its dimensions and functions which is also extremely fascinating Great. Are there any blockchain projects that you guys are specifically working on that you think will um, be coming online and having a big impact? Um, well, we are we are trying to really push uh, the topic of uh, the digital euro. Uh, this is not necessarily the topic CBDC. So not necessarily the European Central Bank needs to act here. Of course, they need to act sooner or later. But on the short term, it would be sufficient uh, to, for example, have banks um, adopting blockchain such that they can allow industrial companies to use the digital euro in their legacy bank accounts. Yeah, this would be not very clearly the digital euro on top of a blockchain system, not in a tokenized form. This is something for the midterm, say plus three years, but on the short term, you could all also work uh, with other solutions, uh, which basically synchronize the euro with DLT networks, right? And here we have five projects uh, with uh, machinery companies, um, a tractor uh, a company, a company in the area of chemical supplies and so on. We have five more or less not related projects where machines, sensors and all kinds of industry appliances should be connected to the euro um, with the goal of exploring pay-per-use business models. And then on top of this, financial services in the area of industrial goods, such as leasing factories and so on. And that's, that's fascinating. And I think we will see more of such projects. Great. Very interesting stuff. So just finally, one quick last question. What role do you think that ANAPA plays in the global blockchain ecosystem? Um, I think ANAPA is a uh, good association, which is uh, very professionally set up. It's, it's growing. It's trying to compile uh, the community. It's also trying to basically uh, educate, instruct, and convince people who are not in blockchain yet to basically join this uh, community. Uh, the, there is a good Slack channel with good discussions going on. Uh, you now do more and more outreach um, um, possibilities to educate people. I think this is part of the adoption, which is extremely important. Um, and uh, there is just one issue that um, trust also is established by physical means. Um, and we all have the issue of Corona 
where we cannot meet easily on conferences and meetups and so on, that makes uh, Inatbar's tasks of education and re you know really convincing people that blockchain is a good technology to work with uh, maybe a little bit uh, harder. Uh, but but you are working around this with uh, videos and other things. So therefore, I think it's an integral part of of this education point which we discussed previously. Great. Yes. Well, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip, for your time and for those uh, interesting comments. I appreciate it. Thanks very much.